Hello everyone and welcome in this video about uh, Let's Play Dwarf Fortress. In this video I'll be showing you how to find an appropriate location to start a new fortress. So what we will do is we will start playing and we will choose Dwarf Fortress. You can only have one fortress active in each region at the same time. So if you want to start a second fortress while still keeping your old one, you will have to generate a new world. Now this might seem confusing the first time that you uh, that you do this. Um, what you will see on the right side is the the larger world it says it at the top, you know, this is the world then you will have the region in the center and on the left side you will have the local area you can move around in the world with your uh, keypad uh, you can move around in the region with your keypad as I'm doing right now as I'm uh, moving around you will also see that my location on the world is also changing You can see at the bottom of the screen uh, which keys you have to use to move around the other areas. Like the U key moves the local area up, for example. And the M key moves it down. The K moves it to the right and H moves it to the left. Finding an appropriate embark site will be, might be difficult. Some of the things that you have to take into account are, for example, aquifers. Aquifers are areas in the soil that have infinite amounts of water. Digging into an aquifer might lead to flooding your fortress. On top of that, it's difficult to dig deeper because the, the water is essentially blocking your progress. There are ways of dealing with aquifers, including cavings and other techniques, but these are often difficult and not recommended for beginning players. Another thing to take into account is soil layers. Soil layers are very convenient because they allow easy farming. So what you want to do is look for an area that doesn't have an aquifer but does have some soil and preferably some deep and some shallow uh, metals. Another thing to keep in mind is fluxstone. Fluxstone is a material that is needed to create steel. If you don't have any fluxstone on your map, then you o the only option to get it is by trading. This uh, makes it much dif more difficult to produce steel. Steel is one of the better ma uh, materials in the game. There are some uh, materials that are stronger than steel, but they are also much more difficult to make or obtain, or they are much rarer. If you press stop, then you can see your neighbors. This is also very interesting to see whether you will have trade caravans of dwarves, elves and humans and whether or not you will have goblin sieges. Goblin sieges are quite easy and fun so I recommend keeping them. You can also see the elevation levels and some other indicators. In order to find the desired location you have to press F. This will allow you to choose several options such as aquifer, we, don't, uh, we will set this to no, fluxstone, we will set it to yes, and we will also make sure that we have some metal for easy uh, military material access. I'll just leave soil for now. Once you have chosen your options, you press enter to do a search. The computer will go over each uh, region and each local area and it will automatically uh, let you know which uh, regions that are useful for you to embark. I will let this run for a few minutes while the computer does a search and I'll be back with you when it's done. Hello again. As you can see the computer has done has finished its search. In order to browse the result we have to press escape. Now you can see that the map has these uh, flashing green crosses. These are all regions that 
apply for the parameters that we have requested in particular no aquifer flux stone and metals on the local screen you can see what kind of um, area it is this particular area is a sand desert these are the symbols for sand we can see on the region map that this is all a sandy area and we can see on the world map um, let's see where we are we are in here on a little island on the south um, western part of the world so let's go uh, a, a little bit more north another thing to keep in mind on your embark site is the vegetation and the trees this particular site has all the requirements that I want some soil, shallow, shallow metal, deep metal and flux stone but it has only sparse trees this should be more than enough but I'm going to look for a site with more trees just because it's more convenient especially for if, you, if this is your first fortress you might want to look with a site that has a lot of trees some items can only be made out of wood like for example pads well it might be possible I'm not sure to make pads out of other materials such as glass or maybe some metals I'm not sure but that's going to be very uh, difficult to obtain so uh, usually the the best way to uh, make beds is by wood if you are lucky with your uh, trade caravans then you will be able to buy a lot of woods from them so even if your site doesn't have a lot of trees that doesn't mean that you will not be able to have it so this site is looking pretty good the temperature is cold which I think is actually a convenience because it freezes over the water it's also a little bit of a problem because uh, any surface water that gets frozen is no longer uh, a source of drinking water for your dwarves your dwarves usually don't drink any water except when they are in the hospital when they're injured or unconscious then other dwarves have to give them water so having water in your fortress uh, can sometimes be important in order not to have your uh, your injured dwarves die from thirst however this is not going to be a problem this site has all the requirements that I want in my site some soil, shallow water, uh, metals, deep metals, flux stone which is ideal but it also is heavily for forested has a lot of other ve vegetation and has a wilderness surrounding which is interesting because we're going to see some animals you can also see the different biomes so a very small part of my map has uh, doesn't have any shallow metals but that doesn't really matter but it's good to know so I, I'm not going to dig into the northwestern part of my my local area so what we're going to do now is we're going to embark so I'll press E when you uh, first start the game you will only have two options but you can also save profiles which is very convenient because in later games you can just load that profile and you don't have to do everything again but in this case we're going to have to prepare for the journey carefully you will notice several things on the screen first of all on the left side of the screen are the names of your dwarves on the right side of the screen are the uh, the professions or the skills that these dwarves can have you will need at least one dwarf that is a miner it's not necessarily to start with the mining skill however having a higher skill increases the mining speed and also allows your dwarf to become legendary a little bit faster this can be useful to mine certain ores a legendary miner has a higher chance of receiving ores when he digs into uh, certain veins 
the next thing that you can do is when you press tab you go to the item screen these are all the items that you will take on your journey for example you will be bringing two copper picks and each pick has a value of 44 on the lower right hand of the screen you will see the number of points that you have left if you only start with one pick instead of two you will see that my points just increased by 44 I'm also going to start without an X and this will also significantly increase my points an anvil is pretty much necessary crutches and splints can easily be made especially considering that we are going to start in an area with a lot of um, trees the same thing with uh, buckets and other materials so I'm just going to remove all these unnecessary items uh, bags can be made from clothes or having some bags is useful plump helmets and plump helmet spawns are going to be your main source of food so that's why we will have most of these I personally like to increase the number of plump helmet spawns to something more reasonable. This allows me to start farming at a higher uh, rate a bit, little bit earlier. So now you might wonder why did I remove all these items? Well, it's because I now can now I can add more skills to my dwarf. This becomes uh, increasingly important later on. What I personally like to do is having one miner, one woodcutter carpenter. Obviously the woodcutting skill is entirely optional. It only increases the speed at which your dwarfs uh, cut down trees. It doesn't improve the quality of the items. However, an, a proficient carpenter will make higher quality items than uh, somebody who is not skilled at carpentry. You can also view the preferences of your dwarves. This can sometimes be useful, but for me it's a little bit too much micromanagement. But you might be able to pair up the traits of your dwarves with uh, the professions that they have. For example, if a particular dwarf likes wood, you could make him a carpenter. I also like to have uh, a mason, which is also an engraver. Masonry is going to add a lot of value to your fortress uh, in terms of uh, things like doors and tables and chairs. Although it's entirely optional, you could uh, you could skip a mason and you could have different skills. I also like to have at least one cook and one brewer, just simply because I like to have these professions to legendary as soon as possible because my dwarves will all be eating and they will all be drinking and if they drink uh, higher quality foods made by a legendary cook or a legendary brewer this will make my dwarves more happy I also like to have at least one armor smith and weapon smith these two particular skills are more expensive to train even later in the game if you're not lucky enough to have an immigrant with a high skill in armor smithing then it's going to be very expensive to train one of your dwarves so if I do this I will have at least a proficient weaponsmith and a proficient armor smith my final dwarf I like to make a leader and most importantly uh, you gi I give him the appraiser uh, skill. This allows him to show the value of items in a train. So he will be my broker who um, makes the trades at the trade post. I will give him a number of other social skills. Negotiator, persuader, liar, intimidator and so on.
You will see that each dwarf only has a number of points that you can use. Making one skill proficient takes 5 points. And each dwarf starts with 10, ten points that he can spend. So I have one cook and uh, one brewer. I'm also going to uh, give them some growing skills. This again is completely optional. I just like to have it that way because it allows me uh, to start uh, farming at a higher speed. I have five more points to spend and I'm just going to increase some random skills that I personally like I'm not sure what they do but I'm going to make him a a teacher and a student so there are a lot of options here for you to uh, customize how you want to embark I still have quite a lot of points left so I'm going to add some items in particular, I'm going to add some uh, wood locks of different kinds. say 10, uh, 10 logs of wood and I'm also going to give myself a bunch of copper bars to make more picks and to make more axes and other stuff like that. I still have quite some points left so I'm going to add uh, let's see if I can find I'm also going to take some sand. Eventually I will may be able to make glass out of this to make uh, certain items that are magma safe. This is not necessarily but it might be fun or convenient. I think I'll just uh, add some more thread that I will use to create uh, more bags and other stuff. So I have now spent all my points. If you want to, now you can save this profile. For example, I will save it under profile 2. If you're going to start a new fortress, then you won't have to go through all this again. You can just load up your previous profile. Since everything is ready, I will now embark on my journey. But I will continue this in the next video, where I will show you the first step after starting. I hope I see you there.